Alright friends, so this is what I do when I haven't fired this machine for a very long time. I get out my WD-40 because what you have with this machine is you have actually uh, bearings, the roller bearings and they're here and, and this is rolling because they're all rolling. Another two here and you can feel it. They're rolling. Is this one? Ro yeah, this one's rolling too. But there's a reason why that is because I maintain it after, right after I, I use it, you see? Okay, now we'll put this thing back together. Put that down there. Let's grab this. You see how, you see what just happened there, friends? Look at that. You can actually see from the last time I greased this thing. This is a bearing, friends. It'll probably start going on itself now that I give her a little W double day. Watch. Done. Okay. Let's, let's run this. Let's get this fired up. It's been a while. I'm excited about this machine. I got, I got enough gas to get us kind of going here. We should be good. Let's, let's do a run here. And so on, and so on, and so on. Friends, I love fire. I'm just looking at that machine. It's over there under the eaves. And I, uh, here comes my son. I run that machine every year, once a year. 
Actually, Rinder, my neighbor, came up. He's got some wood down there he needs split. I may roll it down the driveway and give him a hand. We'll see. But it is what it is, that machine, friends. I've had it for... I, I can't even tell you how many years I've had it. I've gone through two of them. Almost 25. Think so, babe? Twenty for sure. Twenty for sure, friends. I've been through two of them. Oh yeah, for sure. It, they they it, it revol it, it revolutionized my firewood business, friends. I mean, I'm a manual guy, right? I don't I don't I've never had any money to buy any machines or anything that would help me do firewood besides power saws and axes, right? And a truck. Um, but when I learned that you, you you shouldn't stack firewood when you're delivering it, never stack it in your truck. That makes no sense. But when you when all you have is a space, a cord, you need to get a cord in, you stack it. That's that's how that goes. So quickly I figured out I need to get vehicles where I can just throw wood in. No more stacking. So that's the evolution of a firewood guy, right? All the firewood guys are looking at me right now going, right on, Bagan. Yeah, trust me. If there's something I know about it selling and moving firewood around town. Um that machine, though, friends would say to me, get get yourself a hydraulic machine. And I would say, no, thanks. No. Do you know, friends, that I put a... We did we did a test. We did it. It was way before the, the, the YouTube came around. We got a hydraulic splitter and a cord of wood and that machine right there. It was actually two men running it. And and friends, I, I'm, I'm telling you the, the honest truth. I, I don't get off on trying to tell you stories. This is, truth is where I live, okay? That machine was three times as fast as a hydraulic machine. I'm talking old school hydraulics, friends. The ones that are, you know, the tow behind Canadian tire or whatever you guys got, Lowe's, uh, wood splitter, hydraulic. Two wheels, just basic wood splitter, 20, you know, ram. Um, three times as fast. That, do, do you know what the cycle time is on that machine? It's two seconds. One two, one, two. The cycle time is two seconds on that machine. Pop, two, boom. It's two seconds. So what do you do with the wood? Because you can't, that machine waits for you. It waits for you. You don't wait for that machine. You know what I mean? Like it, you're not waiting for nothing. Um, it revolutionized my firewood business. That brought us to six cords a day. Bucked, split, and delivered. Bucked, split, and delivered. We had, this is what we had. I had a one ton cord truck, loose, dump, and I had big green, okay? Big green, which was a two cord poop stack. Okay, you Friends, I wanna be clear, this picture is not the system I'm talking about. The system I had was an old Chevy this is my, my uh, journey to the island, the one I talk about where we barged him over, and I'll tell you about that right now, but that, I'm just giving you an idea of what, what I had. I also had a Chevy a three-quarter ton with a one-ton rear end in it, which was a dump truck, and that was the one cord loose we threw, and it was 180 feet. Actually, it was more than that. It was more than that, so we could get a, a cord and a half loose, but we, we, we called it a cord, and we got it in. All our stuff was always over a little bit, so they'd call you back, right? Don't undercut people, overcut them. Didn't stack nothing, you threw it in the back of the truck. It was, I'll tell you what it was, and you do the math and you'll figure it out. It was, how long was that truck? 12, I think it was 12 feet. 12 by eight by four. Check that out. Do it on your calculator. 12 by four by eight wide, okay? Four high, eight wide by 12 long. Do the math on that and check it out and then take 128 cubic feet right take that number and divide it by 128 and tell me what you get so we all know that's three cords of wood right it's three cords of wood you need about 180 cubic feet of space to get a cord in loosely stacked just thrown in about 180 it's safe so 180 times two is 360. So you see where I'm going with the, with the, with the, so that picture I showed you in there was stacked. Everything was stacked because we were going over on a barge to an island. So that was seven cords of wood right there. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. In those three trucks, that crew cab was one 
big green was three and a third. And the, the load star was two and three quarters or two and two thirds, how it makes up seven cords of wood. That was seven cords of wood. They loved us over there. Because the other people, what they would do to bring seven cords over is this is what they would do. They would rent a U-Haul truck and they would stack it in there by hand, not a dump truck. They would stack it in by hand. And the barge cost like 300 bucks an hour. So the people on the island at the mercy of the firewood guy would have to pay the barge guy per hour. So the big, the big huge moving truck would come off the, 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 the truck, the barge, go onto the island and deliver by hand, throwing out by hand, two cords here, one cord there, one cord there, two cords there. What we would do is drive off the boat <laughs> and go poof, poof, dump it. And everybody would come and take their wood. They loved us because our, because the, the money spent was on the barge, not on the firewood. See what I'm saying? So I remember years that we did that for a few years. And then, uh, friends, I, 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 was, I was a going concern around town. I was, I was falling, tree service, firewood. Back in the day, it was nuts. I loved it. And I, 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 I'm telling you, there's a hard work and the, there's a living in hard work and there's a living in this industry. There's a living in firewood now like never before. You're one man with a power saw and a pickup truck. You can sell firewood. It takes you two hours to process a quart of firewood. And don't tell me it doesn't. That's, that's $150 an hour. It's tough to be broke these days. Well, what we would do is actually we'd fill the one ton, poof, gone. Like seriously, friends, not even a half an hour. Out the door. Boom, in comes the, two, the, the, the big green truck. Poof, 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 poof. Guy would come back, delivery guy, jump out of that truck, jump in big green, poof, gone. There's three cords. That was by noon. I'm just telling you, this was our system. That machine in the right wood is in, you, you can't. There's no way you can, unless you had like a conveyor system and some of these splitters these days are amazing with the, uh, they just are, they're, they're wonderful. Like that axis, that axis is wicked. It's wicked, but there's quite a bit more involved in that, that machine. I'll be straight with you, friends. If there's one thing I can talk to and speak to with much confidence, it's firewood and moving firewood around and the firewood business. Um, you have to have the right wood for that machine. You do, friends. It's got to be the right, the right wood. Like, it'll handle, it'll split freaking this, but it's got to be straight grain. It, it's, and, it, and it's very manual. Very manual, no lifts, no nothing. So what we would do is put a, put a round down, right? And then we would roll the round onto the round and then onto the, you know, you just think like an Egyptian, right? The Grippo, amazing machine. I love you people. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy you're here sharing this freaking silver fox journey with me. Uh, People have been wondering lots in the comments, Bucking, you're you're sick. You look sick. Are you sick? Are you are you dying? <laughs> no, I was heavy and now I'm not heavy. Let me show you a couple of pictures when my kids were young and I was an animal after my accident. I'll see if I can find some before, but I'll show you after my accident. I went from 185 pounds and I was a monster. There wasn't an ounce on me. I was a monster. And, uh, and then I got hit by that tree in 06. And I went down to, I think, 160 pounds of, of complete nothing. Nothing. I, I, I was destroyed. It destroyed me. Don't even like thinking about it. So I've been climbing back ever since, if you want to know the honest truth. For 17 years, I've been climbing up a hill. So I feel like I've kind of got to the top of the hill now. And now I need to look after things. That was a little bit about me. Let's get back at it.
So if we had another man here and that was a pickup truck, if the woodshed was a pickup or a trailer or something, you'd have a man there grabbing that wood as soon as it splits and fall, he, it doesn't even hit the ground. And it leaves the splitter blade and goes right into a truck. This is all manual, friends. It's not, you know, you don't, you don't try and recreate the wheel and re, you know, redesign the wheel with a machine like this. It's designed to split, fairly obtainable, uh, not crazy wood, it's fast, but when you build fast, like the 500i, you suffer in certain areas. Uh, you know, you're not as strong as some of the other brands. Uh, this is that machine. It's, it's slick and mean and fast, and, and you have to have the right circumstances for it. Friends, watch me as I go through this massive knot. I know this is gonna happen, so I'm ready. If you don't know this machine, you, you won't know what to do. Watch this. Bang. Boom. It it won't, it's not hydraulic. What it'll do is it'll those wheels will keep spinning and it'll burn rubber. It runs on, you see? So anyway, yeah, here I gotta set the camera up.
I must be getting stronger, friends, because I, I would not be able to bend over that long running that machine. Uh, I have I always have to stop when I run that machine, and I and I didn't. That's a cord of wood in there in about straight time. Ah, uh, oh, 40 minutes playing around, moving cameras around. A couple little pieces here and there to split with an axe. But I'm done. There it is. In the in the shed. If you want to save yourself a whole bunch of BS after you're done with a machine like this. Give it that. Just just give it that. And it, it'll save you when you go to fire it up next time. You'll be like, oh gosh, I'm glad I done that.